Okay, guys, uh, welcome uh, to the first demo uh, in this course. Probably you have been waiting for a long time for the first demo, and now it's uh, time to present it to you. And the first demo is gonna be about Burp Suite Intruder, how to use Burp Suite Intruder in practice, and uh, how to use it uh, for fuzzing in the context of SQL injection. So I'm going to do here fuzzing for SQL injection with Burp Suite Intruder, okay? So let's start. I've got a testing web application. This is um, actually um, an online shopping platform. And I've got some sellers uh, here. Uh, three sellers, David Cooper, uh, Michael Green, and Mark Gross. And I can here um, do some searching by, by name. So I can put, for example, uh, David here. Uh, I can search if there is David, and indeed there is David Cooper, right? And um, whatever I'm trying to search for, uh, it is uh, sent uh, in the get parameter named search name, right? So you see the parameter search name, and the value is right now David. And now let me provide something random, right? If I provide something random, then there is no seller like this. And I see the message, uh, we can't find any seller that matches search criteria. Well, this is expected because um, I provided some random characters. Okay, uh, let me go back to sellers.php uh, right now. We've got these three, um, three sellers. And now a kind of, um, you know, thinking about the story here. We've got some sellers, we've got some uh, search functionality, and most probably these sellers are stored in the database, right? This is how it looks like in modern web applications, and there is a kind of database processing. So maybe I can provide here some malicious payload, and maybe I am able to do SQL injection here. Who knows? Uh, let's check if this is um, possible. And uh, now I'm gonna show you how to uh, use fuzzing to check whether an SQL injection here is possible uh, or not, okay? So the first thing that I have to do uh, is I have to um, intercept the, the request going out from my browser. That's the first thing that I'm gonna do. Um, keep in mind that we are here in the world of web application security testing. So it's all about requests and responses. And when you wanna do fuzzing, then you need to have a request, right? So um, I'm gonna first intercept the request going out from my browser, and then I'm gonna send this request to Intruder. But step by step, first I'm going to generate the request uh, from my browser and I'm going to intercept it. What I've got here in my testing web application is Burp Suite uh, free edition and uh, one uh, part of Burp Suite free edition is proxy, uh, what you can see in the upper left corner. And there is uh, the so-called interceptor here. And now I'm going to turn on the interceptor because I'm going to intercept the request going out from my browser. And in my testing environment, the traffic going out from my browser is sent out through the proxy. So if I turn on the interceptor here, I'm going to intercept the outgoing request, okay? So this is how it looks like. So I'm going to turn it on. Now I'm going to go to my web application. And in the search name, I'll provide again something arbitrary. And yeah, search. Now let's go to my proxy. And here you can see that indeed the request has been intercepted. You see, there is a search name parameter with some random value, right? Now. This is, this is the proxy. It has been intercepted. Now I need to send it to intruder. How to do it? Click right and choose option send to intruder. Okay. Now let me go to intruder and uh, it, is, uh, it is out there. Go to positions. And you see, this is my request. Right now it is you know, in intruder, and this is what I wanted to happen, okay? So uh, let me now clear all these highlights, and uh, let me show you how to um, instruct the Burp Suite intruder, where is my placeholder for malicious payloads, okay? 
So um, we are interested in the search name uh, parameter, right? This is where we are sending our data that we want to, you know, we want to find out whether a given seller is available or not. And we are providing the data out there or the data that we are providing is sent in certain parameter, right? So this is my placeholder for malicious data. So I'm going to highlight this one. And once it is highlighted, I'm going to click add. And now uh, this is a placeholder for my malicious payloads, okay? So now I instructed Bur Burp Suit Intruder that this is the placeholder for malicious payloads. Cool. Uh, now you see the attack type is sniper. This is what I uh, explained to you in the previous uh, video. So this is the most popular uh, attack type. Every single malicious payload from the list is going to be taken and put into this placeholder. And uh, yeah, this is um, uh, how it works. So we also need um, the list of payloads, right? So let me go to the payloads here. And here you're going to see payload options, simple list. Now I'm going to load the list of payloads. And the list of payloads that I already introduced to you in the previous video is here. In the root directory, user share WFAST word list injections, right? And now uh, I've got it open and you can see uh, that there are different lists uh, of payloads. Uh, uh, there are lists of payloads for a uh, SQL uh, injection um, here. Here for path traversal. Um, we've got also for XML, XSS, uh, you know, quite many uh, different uh, lists, which is really nice because it gives us an opportunity to do fuzzing for different kinds of uh, vulnerabilities. As I mentioned at the very beginning of this demo, I'm going to focus on SQL injection because this is this is the context, uh, you know, um, of this story. And I will click open. So all these malicious payloads have been, let's say, incorporated or loaded to Burp with Intruder. So what I've got right now is I've got a list of payloads already loaded. Um, here I've got my payload position, right? I clearly marked that this is a payload position. And the attack type is sniper, right? So it looks like we've got everything. Now let me go to intruder here, click start attack, okay? And now what you can see here, a kind of pop-up message. The free edition of Burp contains a demo version of Burp Suite Intruder. Some functionality is disabled and attacks are time throttled. Uh, I will tell you something more about this uh, when the fuzzing is underway. So let me click OK. And now I'm going to tell you something more about this. I'm using here the free edition of Burp Suite. You can go, you can take it. As the name suggests, it's just free. And when you use free edition, then when the time goes on, then the speed of fuzzing decreases, right? This is how it works. So... This fuzzing works perfectly good in Burp Suite pre-edition, but again, when the time goes on, then the speed of fuzzing decreases. And when you want to have, you know, the maximum speed of fuzzing, then you've got a problem when you've got a, a free uh, edition of Burp Suite. So uh, if you want to have a maximum speed of fuzzing, then you just need to buy Burp Suite Pro and uh, I really uh, do recommend you to do it because this is really, as I mentioned, uh, the, the number one platform for web application uh, security testing. But in case of fuzzing, this is it. So there is a kind of um, a limitation. But this is a limitation related to the speed of fuzzing. The fuzzing still works very fine and you will see it in a minute. Uh, but you cannot, you know, take out the most of it. Um, because this is this is the free edition, but in terms of you know uh, technical stuff, it still uh, works. But uh, it, it will be slow when you've got a long list of payloads. Okay, uh, so this is uh, basically uh, how it works. 
So now my fuzzing is underway. You can see the progress bar at the, uh, at the bottom uh, of my screen. So uh, right now I need to wait, right? And this is how it works. This attack is underway. Um, and as I mentioned, this is the free edition, so it will slow down when the time goes on. But it works perfectly good. Again, I, I really want to emphasize this because I, I don't want to tell you don't use at all free edition. No, you can still use it, but there are some limitations and I want to point them out, right? Okay, the, the, the fuzzing is underway. So I'm going to pause this video and I will come back in about three, four, five minutes, something like this, when the fuzzing is done. Then I'm gonna uh, jump to the interpretation of the results, okay? So let me pause the video right now and let me uh, get back after a couple of minutes. Okay, guys, I'm back. Uh, after a couple of minutes, uh, the fuzzing is done right now. Uh, so uh, the next step is manual verification, right? So we asked Burp Suite Intruder to do an automated attack for us. The automated attack uh, has been finished. Now we need to go to manual verification. We need to find out whether there are some anomalies in the responses or not. So this is exactly what I'm going to do. Here you see um, the different uh, responses, right? So like status, uh, code, length of response, right? We can see different things like whether error has occurred, timeout, stuff like that. And here, of course, we've got payloads. And now we need to find anomalies, as I mentioned. So uh, I'm going to do some kind of sorting right now in ascending or descending order just to see if we've got some anomalies or not. So I will click status here, ascending, descending orders, right? All the time I see 200s. Now error, the same ascending, descending. All the time I see that, you know, nothing ha has changed. Timeout, the same, no anomalies. And length right now. Oh, can you see something interesting? Now um, I've got a descending order. So for one payload, the payload like this here, for this payload, I've got the length of response 10,604. And for all other payloads, the length of response is 4,933. So yeah, we've got an anomaly here, right? And for some reason, for this payload, uh, we've got a length of response like over uh, 10,000 bytes, right? Mm, it's, it's interesting. So let's see uh, what we've got here for uh, the length 4933 uh, in the response. Let me analyze the response right now. So uh, in the response, I'll switch to render here. Sorry, we can't find any seller that matches search criteria, right? So this is what we see here when the uh, length of response is 4933. But uh, here, when the length of response is 10,604, I can see different names. And this is strange. David Cooper, Michael Green, and Mark Ross, these guys are the sellers. And now Russell Washington, Angela Harris, Daniel Robinson, Carl Martinez, and a lot more. Hmm. This is surprising. So there are free sellers in my uh, online shopping platform. And now when I provide this payload, I see a lot more people. So most probably these people are customers because if I've got free sellers and I've got online shopping platform, then most probably the, the rest guys are customers. Uh, so it looks like we've got an SQL injection that results in uh, fetching more data from the database than we are supposed to fetch. And um, yeah, this is something that really looks like a valid SQL injection. And you can take it right now and you can report it uh, to the bug bounty program owner and you can get uh, money for a finding like this one. And this is how it works. So I found out an anomaly 
And then I uh, decided, you know, to analyze what happened here. And I figure out that most probably um, I see also the customers and I shouldn't uh, be able to see this data, uh, obviously. So yeah, it looks like a true positive. And here is the payload that uh, you have to send out to the web application. And then uh, in, in response, you're going to see a, a lot more data than you are actually supposed to see. Uh, so this is how it works. This is how fuzzing works. You see, we've got an automation and then manual verification. And now you can think about this payload. Why this one payload results in this kind of a behavior? Why this payload results in SQL injection? And I will give you an answer. You don't have to go into the details here. Your point is to do manual verification and see if this is a true positive or false positive. You really don't have to go into the details of, of, you know, thinking of what might have happened out there. And this is also the power of fuzzing. If you know the recipe, just apply this recipe and then make an interpretation. Find anomalies, try to figure out whether you've got a false positive or true positive, And you don't have to, you know, go into, into the details of a given payload because you don't know the implementation. Again, in 99% of cases in bug bounty programs, you don't know what is the implementation and you don't have to know. In black box testing, it works perfectly good. I mean, you've got a payloads, you analyze responses, you interpret the responses, you interpret the anomalies and you make some conclusions. And, and based on these conclusions, you construct a report and send it to the bug bounty program owner. This is, uh, this is how it works. So I want to tell you that you don't have to go uh, into the details of why this particular payload might work or, or maybe not working, right? And this kind of stuff. I have found really nice four-digit bugs with fuzzing where I had no idea why a given payload worked. I mean, I have some kind of ideas in my mind, but on the other hand, this is black box testing. And the goal here is to prove that a given attack is possible, right? And, and that's it. That's what I want to uh, tell you. Okay, uh, so basically, uh, this is it for the first demo. I hope that you understand um, everything. And if you don't understand everything, don't worry, because in the next demo, I'm going to do um, the steps again, but in the context of different, uh, different attack. So you will have more opportunities to practice with Burp Suit Intruder and Fuzzing. Um, so I hope it has been informative for you and let me now jump to the second demo.